Hey everybody, it's Karen Bryant from Mejita. I'm here with Gegard Mousasi, who of course we all know is facing Lyoto Machida in Brazil on February 15th. And uh, and Gegard, thank you for taking some time before you hit the road. Where where are you now and when are you heading to Brazil if you're not already there? Uh, I'm in Holland at my, uh, at my mother's house. Oh, nice. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. And when do you head out? Uh, well, I will leave on Monday. Oh, okay, very nice. Now, is it... Yeah. You know, I know for you making 185, you haven't been there in a little while. So, are you allowed to indulge in mom's home cooking right now, or do you have to kind of not eat too much? No, I um, I'm on weight, so I diet as soon as I um, I diet almost three months ago. So oh, wow. I was a long time on weight, so I can eat uh, enough, so I can train also well. Very nice. Now, how does that affect your training? Is that did that make it? Um, you know, better, easier to train for this fight. I'm just kind of curious what what advantage you would have by already being close to the to fight weight. Well, less worries, I think, and then uh, I, I can eat a little bit more carbs. So when I train, uh, I feel I have more energy. So that's why that's why I uh, diet uh, as soon as I uh, knew I would go down. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I made the, I'm gonna make the weight easy. I'm I'm around 200 pounds, so it shouldn't be very difficult. Very nice. And even when you were fighting at 205, it wasn't like you were that much bigger than that anyway, right? No, last couple of fights I was 205, just 205, even in the fight I was 205. So <laughs> that wasn't a lot of uh, weight cuts. Right. So let's talk about 185. You haven't fought there in how long? Well, uh, I think 2009, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or 2008 yeah. with the yeah. middleweight Grand Prix. So, and what was the reasoning for, for going back down? Is it just you feel that you have better opportunities at that weight class or that your body just was feeling better at, at, at 185? Well, I think um, I, I will perform much better at uh, 185. It's much more suited for my body frame, I mm -hmm. believe. And uh, I know a lot of guys cut a lot of weight, so you don't want to give that advantage. And uh, also, I think... Um, Maybe uh, one or two wins. I'm a, away from the title shot at middleweight. I think I can go to the title much quicker. Well, it's interesting because Dana has said if Lyoto wins, he, you know, Dana's funny and always says possibly or might be, but, you know, they, he's expressed that Lyoto would be closer to a title shot if he beats you, and yet the reverse isn't true for you. So how do you feel about that? Well, you know, it's, it's a... When I when I had to fight Gustafsson, yeah. I went to Sweden to fight him. He would have got a title shot if he would have won, and I wouldn't. And now the same it's the same. I go to Brazil to fight Machida, and if I, if he wins, he get a title shot, but I don't. So I don't know. It's uh, I don't understand uh, how it works. But uh, I think I just need more fights in the UFC. Well, that, yeah, it's interesting because obviously on the one hand you could look at that as a a very positive assessment of who you are because obviously they re recognize that you're a big enough challenge that getting past you would be worthy of a title shot. So in a way, it, it's a compliment to you in, in kind of a backhanded way. Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I get uh, big names. Uh, I get uh, title contenders. Uh, so I can't complain uh, really about my opponents that I'm getting. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, as far as um, title fight, um, if I win impressively, I feel I could deserve a title shot yeah. but uh, you know it's not up to me we go we see how the fight go and then we go from there we'll see how it goes now obviously we all missed out on seeing you fight alexander gustafson how i talked to you before that fight and you know was switched to uh, ilir latifi how how much of a letdown was that actually now looking back of you know what an opportunity you had and then it got taken away well um gustafson fought a very good fight against uh, john jones yeah. so i think his stocks uh, rised up a lot and uh, um, I think uh, you know I don't know I was injured in that fight anyway so maybe it worked out just fine so because um, I wasn't able to do a lot on the ground mm -hmm. and but uh, Gustafsson was a tall guy so I was uh, I wanted to fight him close I wanted to bring the fight to him and with uh, Latifi I had to keep the fight at the distance so it was a different fight fight style but uh, I think I would have done well even with the injury but uh, at the end I think it, uh, it worked out also for me so and what was the injury well I had the torn ACL at that time right and yeah. so and that's why we haven't seen you fighting since then because that was last April yeah yeah so and I got an operation and uh, I'm fine now so 
Okay, because I, you know we've seen so many knee injuries in the UFC lately, and it's just like really upsetting because it's the type of thing that people sometimes re-injure. So, yeah. um, but you're feeling good. Yeah, I'm 100. percent It's uh, it was difficult, but uh, it's now in the past. I'm I'm just happy that I got through it and I can fight again. Good. Well, especially with somebody like Leota Machida, movement is going to be very important. You're you're obviously going to be, uh, you know, he, he's a, he's for the most part a stand-up fighter. How do you assess Leota Machida in general, and specifically now that he's gone down to 185 as well? Well, I think he's a he's a very intelligent fighter, and um, he does. What he does, he does very well. You know, he's a different style than a lot of other fighters. Mm -hmm. He's a, he's a dangerous guy. Uh, he's a, you have to fight smart against him. And uh, I think he looked good in his last fight in middleweight. And uh, yeah, I'm 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 excited for the fight. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been excited for a fight. Well, that's good. Well, and, and yeah. this is one when it was announced that I I was totally excited about it. And it feels like. Uh, a lot of the hardcore fans um, are really excited about this one. And I feel like for you, you know, you fought all over the world and the the, the Gustafson fight was going to be kind of a, a, an introduction to a UFC audience. And obviously you won the fight against Latifi. But do you feel with this fight with Lyoto that, yeah, there is some sort of, not that you have to prove something, but that this is your chance now to really expose yourself and let people know who Gegard is, uh, fighting against somebody who's as well-known and popular as Lyoto? Yeah, for sure. I think um, he's an ex-UFC uh, champion and uh, he's a big name, he's a well-known fighter, so of course the win over him um, will get some attention, yeah. yeah. And you haven't fought in Brazil before though, have you? No, and, uh, it's the second time I'm going now. Oh, the second time. Yeah. Okay, so how did, how did you like it the first time you went? Uh, it was nice, uh, but I prefer like U.S. because um, I know the language, the food is easier to get, uh, and uh, but uh, it was nice, not bad, yeah. So, and that won't take too much out of you. I know a lot of people, you know, that that's a, it's a pretty far trip from Holland to Brazil. Yeah. So, I mean, is that going to be any kind of a, an influence on you? I'm kind of almost a little surprised that you didn't go before Monday. Yeah, it's uh, last time it was I had to take three air, three planes mm -hmm. to get there. It's in Jaraguá. It's yeah, like in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so <laughs> I'm going to Gegard though, so I'm, yeah. I'm excited. This will be fun. Uh, yeah, it should be good. But uh, uh, yeah, it's a 11 hour flight, and then I maybe I have to change another flight. Yeah. Uh, but um, usually now this time I will fly business class. So <laughs> hopefully. Uh, it won't uh, affect me a lot. That's good. Well, I know on the way home, a lot of us have a like a six-hour layover or something in Sao Paulo. So if you're if you're in the airport, I'll buy you a caipirinha. Thank you. <laughs> um, there was a couple of other things that I wanted to talk to you about. You know, you're on a a win streak right now. Um, but do you feel that the, the competition you you faced? Do you feel that you know some people might argue, oh, Leota's facing tougher guys and this and that. I mean, how do you assess the the people that you've beaten recently and and the momentum that you're getting on this four fight win streak? Well, of course, you have fought with more well known fighters, mm -hmm. and uh, but um, uh, you know, at the time that I was fighting, like in the Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. I fought like Dennis Kang. At that moment, he was top 10. Uh, yeah. uh, when I fought uh, Jack Ray, mm -hmm. uh, he wasn't uh, uh, really a top 10 fighter, but now he is, you know? Now he is. It's, yeah. Uh, how, you can look at it. Um, um, it's People look at it a lot to the names, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, to win also, you know, I fought K1. I fought uh, Mark Hunt, who is mm -hmm. doing now very well, you know? Yeah. It's difficult to say, but uh, I understand how fans thinks, think, and uh, of course the UFC is a big brand, so the fighters there are always more well-known. Right. Well, there was a time, what, um, around Christmas or so, you were kind of putting out there on, on, on Twitter that you would like to face Shogun or Vitor or something, and it, it was that the same, would you think stylistically those were good matchups, or you thought those were good people, you know, to, to beat and, and get your name up in uh, title contention? Well, I thought uh, Gustafsson, Mashida, Shogun, or uh, Fito. I thought because they're the, they're exciting fighters mm -hmm. and they're well-known fighters, and it's because they're good fighters. Yeah. And I think matchup wise, it would it's a fights that it's exciting. Yeah. If if you put me against 
like i don't know some uh, grappler people won't get that much excited about it but i think matchup wise it was much better for me and you know now, those the those were the fights that I was looking for. Right. Well, and speaking of the the grapplers, and you know the King Mo fight, you could see it on your face that you were just kind of annoyed with that fight. Yeah, I, I wasn't uh, at my best <laughs> at that time, but uh, I think uh, I made a lot of mistakes in that fight. But yeah. uh, I learned a lot from it. Yeah. Well, in general, Gigard, what I what I what I love about you is you always have this nonchalant vibe. You're like. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Like, I'm ready to fight. Your your stare down pictures are always kind of the same. You're like, yeah, let's just do this already. Um, it's funny. I mean, that that's kind of the vibe you've always had. Like a very calm, a calm demeanor where a lot of guys are jumping around. You've always seemed very calm. Yeah, it's because I have to. I have to do it. <laughs> I rather uh, spend my uh, yeah fight day doing something else. But right. fighting, yeah. yeah, you have to do it. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, and it's funny because all the other Armenians I know, too, are always much more amped. Manny Gamborian, Serapian, yeah. or a couple of the guys that are in the UFC, they're always a lot more amped up than you. Uh, yeah, let's, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Did you come out to Glendale Fight Club at all this trip? You didn't, you for this camp, you didn't? No, no I haven't been to yes for a year almost, so, well, yeah, maybe after sure. the fight. Yeah, I know they're keeping busy with Ronda, though, she, they're, they're, she's a star. Yeah, I hear uh, good things uh, about her. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, uh, you know, I, I do want to talk to you about you had a, your training partners. You had a Polish training partner this time. Who did you bring in? Because that's one thing, you know, Leota's style is so difficult to mimic. Well, I had uh, enough sparring partners, uh, but uh, most important, I trained with Jawad Ikan. That's, uh, that's my friend I always trained with, but mm -hmm. he, he's a karate guy. He fought Mashida even twice, oh, I believe, in karate. Okay. So... He he does Mashida exactly the same. Nice. And nice. I would say even better. Really? But uh, really? yeah, as karate wise, yeah, I would karate, say. Karate wise. So I learned a lot from him. So I don't think uh, I know. At least I know what to expect in the fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because really, at the end of the day, most people are not going to be able to beat Machida with karate, obviously. So you just need to find the the, the anti potion to that, basically, right? Yeah, for sure, because his uh, his movement sideways, he lures in, he he has straight punches. It's a lot of stuff that I didn't know, but once I studied him and uh, with my friend also, it's I understand much more better how he fights and how to fight him. Right, and you, I mean, I'm guessing you believe your punching power is better. Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, but, I think at uh, this point, they got you better believe that, right? Yeah, I think I think. Um, but I don't think that's the most important thing in this fight. I think the most in to fight intelligence. And uh, I'm I'm planning on just to, um, yeah, I'm not focusing on putting a lot of power into the punches. I just I will just throw them and um, the punches that you don't see those are the most dangerous. And that's what Lioto is good at. He surprises you. You don't see the punches coming, and that's why he knocks you out. It's not because he punches very hard. But uh, it's a surprise, you know, so, sure. yeah. Well, and you do have a lot of experience. You, you have more fights than he does. Uh, well, yeah, I don't know how many karate fights he has. But, yeah, uh, that's true. <laughs> I think, yeah, but uh, uh, it's, um, I train in Holland. I, I train a lot of kickboxing, but his style is very different. Yeah. So it's not like you go there to, you. he doesn't really come to fight like, fight, brawl, uh, take punches, give some punches. He's more of a waiting guy. He's a very different style. So I, um, I adapt my training to that. Nice. Well, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be great. I'm really excited about it. But, and in other, uh, in other news, are you, uh, watching the Olympics? Do you, do you get into the Olympics at all? Uh, no, I don't like the winter Olympics. No. <laughs> No. <laughs> Neither do I. It's funny. I watch a couple of things like you know the bobsledding and the luge is, is fine, but I'm a I'm a warm weather person, so like the cold yeah. stuff just kind of I'm like I don't want to be there, man. That looks, you know, it looks. Bad. No, it's not my thing. Yeah. No, no, and but, all uh, of course, uh, yeah, what? it's difficult, but they do. But it's not my thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> and all this stuff. I don't know if you've seen anything coming out of Sochi. Like the water, the drinking water in the hotels is yellow, and they, it's just it looks like a bad situation. No, I haven't seen it, yeah, but yeah. I saw some pictures on YouTube, like yeah. two bathrooms in one place, right. uh, stuff like that, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Not at all, not at all. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God, that's crazy. Well, cool. Well, I, I hope you, um, 
enjoy the time with your family here and uh and like i said i'll see you in brazil i don't get there probably till thursday or so it's gonna be a short trip for me but uh but i'm really looking forward to it and and this is gonna be a great fight so have fun out thank, there. thank you very much thank all right you. good girl. i'll see you okay. soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.